Now, what's funny, as you watch this whole re revealing of the new pope at the Vatican, and you've got all the people who are crying and waving their flags, etc., and the television cameras for about an hour were looking at this grand balcony in the Vatican, and as they're dressing the new pope, the white smoke has already come out, and they're putting on the finest clothes, etc. I'm obsessed with the red shoes, but they're putting his red shoes on. It just looks goofy to me, but hey, that's just me. Um, I thought for a second, because somebody here mentioned, I think in fact it was John Iderola in the studio, saying like, yeah, this is what Jesus would have wanted. Think about that, right? Did Jesus say, hey, you know what, get a guy, dress him up really fancy, okay, put him on a really grand balcony at this amazing mansion, and then when he comes out, everybody cry and clap, and everybody bow your head and listen to every word he says. If you read the New Testament, that would seem to be really close to the opposite of what Jesus said. He, remember, he threw the money changers out of the temple. He did not like to organize religion of that time. He fought against organized religion. What's the Catholic Church? Organized religion! <laughs> I mean, down to what kind of shoes you're going to wear and what kind of funny clothes you're going to ride in and what kind of Pope mobile you're going in. So, and then, of course, you get to the things that I, I know Catholics get mad at me, but really infallible? Infallible. And then they make all sorts of excuses. Well, we're kind of infallible, infallible in the doctrine, and blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. I got news for you. He's not infallible. Five minutes before he was declared pope, everybody was arguing with this guy. They were like, oh, come on, Bergoglio. You don't know anything, man. Come on. What are we going to get? We're going to get subs or pizza? What are we getting? Oh, don't listen to Bergoglio. Let's get subs, right? And then he becomes pope. Oh, of course, of course, pizza. I'm sorry, the dude's infallible. He can't be wrong. Get pepperoni pizza. That's it. He's not infallible. How could you possibly believe that? How could you possibly believe it? All right. And then the communication with God. Well, we got two popes now. Who's text messaging the, the God now? It doesn't make any sense. You really think like, yeah, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, okay. What well, would you like me to do? Mm -hmm. But wait a minute. The last pope, Pope Benedict, canceled purgatory. How do you not stop being a Catholic? I mean, your whole life you've been told, oh, purgatory, man. Like, I mean, there's heaven, there's hell, and then there's that middle ground that's kind of shaky. It's not great, it's not terrible, I mean, at least you're not getting tortured, right? And Pope comes in and says, oh, wait, hold on, I'm getting a message. Yeah, oh, yeah, God just tweeted me, purgatory's gone. But wait, did it exist and then you just wiped it away or it never existed and so that was a huge mistake, so then how could you be infallible? Come Please, please. I mean, even if you're a Christian, you shouldn't believe any of this stuff. And if you're not a Christian, it looks downright comical. All right, J.R. Jackson, uh, we call you Reverend J.R. Uh, you're a good Christian. Uh, will you be listening to the commands of uh, the Pope from high above, literally high above on his balcony? I thought it was just uh, Catholics they were supposed to. I, I know. No, very... I know, I know, but come on, come on. Look. Uh, you guys are a breakaway republic, these Protestants, okay? Get back in line. Uh, I was raised in a Baptist church, excuse me. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the, the thing I've, I've wondered and, and noticed, it happens in all, you know, I think in, not, I mean, not all, I haven't studied a bunch of religions, but different kinds of Christianity. Like, when I grew up, there was the pastor of the church, right? And then some people looked at the pastor like he really knew more and had a direct connection to God that you can't have. And as a 10-year-old, I was sitting there going, well, I thought he just was good at interpreting what the Bible's talking about. I didn't think I was supposed to speak through him to speak to God. I just never saw that. I never saw the reasoning for that because I still saw him. Oh, that's this guy who probably goes home and cusses out his wife because he has this, he has this weird, like, anger that rolls up sometimes. In it, so. <laughs> and he's shaking his something, especially in a Baptist church. And he's getting all worked up. You're like, I don't know, that guy's got, right. you know, And it was okay me. because he was good at what he did. Fine. It's like, I saw this, like, that's his job. It's what he does. And doesn't mean that he knows God. Because this thing, they taught you, have a personal and close relationship with God. I was like, so what does this guy have to do with it? So when it comes <laughs> on a broader scale where you have a pope, I'm really thinking these thousands and millions of people, I don't know how many people were in the crowd. Obviously not millions. But yeah. how do you stand there and go, a new God, a new God person has walked. What the how, again, it doesn't mean it lowers your belief in God or any of that stuff. That's why I always made the connection. So how is it you believe this guy is now saying things to God that you can't? It's, right. it's, it's lowering yourself and, and not, I, th I think, slapping God in the face. Oh, that's strong. That's, that's fascinating. One other thing about that, Ratzinger, I guess, now that he's no longer the acting pope, is now fallible again. So 
I, like he doesn't have a wife, but if he did, I'm imagining like his wife's like, oh, thanks God. All right, now, listen, man, I got this thing bottled up for eight years. You did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. Okay, now I'm gonna regulate, it's my time. <laughs>